everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I have my Flawless Face foundation routine. I use the Estee Lauder Double Wear foundation and I also use a few other products as well, um, which are just like tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. I don't wear like a flawless face of foundation every single day. I just don't have the time for it. I literally wake up and I have 10 minutes to get ready in the morning. So I literally just slap on some tinted moisturizer and some mascara and eyebrows and I'm out the door. Um, but when I do know that I'm going out or if I just want to look flawless, this is the routine that I have been reaching for recently. So if you'd like to see how I achieve this flawless face, then just keep watching. Okay, so I'm going to start off by using the Too Faced Hangover RX Primer. And I'm going to mix in a tiny little bit of this Too Faced, no, this is Clarins Instant Light Radiant boosting complexion base in the shade Rose 01. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of each and then I'm going to apply that all over my face. So I like doing that step just to make my foundation just glide on a little bit easier than if my skin was really really dry or anything like that. And then the Clarins Instant Light just gives your skin a really really nice glow. Now I do have some little breakouts um, on my face, so I'm going to go in with the Clarins, Clarins Instant Smooth Perfect Touch um, and then I'm also going to put it around my middle section as well where I have some pores as well. This is just a pinky coloured balm, but when you put it on your face it's transparent. You don't need a lot of this and the texture of it is so nice. What I do is I just wipe it over like where I have um, blemishes and stuff or past blemishes just so the skin texture is a little bit more smooth just so it doesn't cling to any like dry patches and stuff the foundation and then if you do have expression lines I would be putting it in those as well or rubbing it over those as well I don't have many expression lines because I'm pretty expressionless um, or at least I like to think so um, so I don't really do that but if you do have really really like harsh smile lines or like forehead lines and I would recommend you do that also. I just want to mention that I do switch up my products quite regularly but what each product does is the same thing. So if I'm not using the Too Faced Hangover RX and I'm using something else that's also like nourishing and moisturizing and will prolong my foundation, if I'm not using the Clarins Instant Light that I'm using something else that's a little bit illuminating and stuff like that. If I don't want illuminating then I don't put it in but I've really, really been loving the illuminated look recently. Um, if I'm not using the Clarins Balm, then I'm using something else that's like pore perfecting. So professional, Smashbox, pore perfection, um, all that type of thing. So it's not always these exact products, but it's always the products that do the same thing. At least I think so. <laughs> I hope that made sense. So for foundation, I've really, really been enjoying the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. I literally only bought the pump for this last night. Um, this is just a MAC pump that I've put on it. And yeah, so much happier that it has a pump. Um, Estee Lauder owns MAC, so it would only be assumed that their stuff would fit one another. Hence why the MAC pump fits this. And I'm still not used to looking at the Estee Lauder Double Wear bottle with the black lid, but whatever. <laughs> And just if you're curious, I use the shade 2W2 Rattan and yeah, I do have a full review of this on my channel so I will link that down below as well if you're curious. So I always start with a little and then I add more. It's better to add more than have to try and take it away. And I'm just going to use a synthetic um, foundation brush. To be honest, I don't really mind what brush I use, just as long as it is synthetic so it doesn't absorb up the product, then yeah. This is a Sedona Lace 602 brush if you're curious, but to be honest, I don't really like these very much. Um, I'm just using it because it's the only thing that I have that is clean. I would say that this foundation is very, very buildable, which I like. Um, so obviously if you have a very, very flawless skin, you can use less. If you have um, a lot of imperfections, just use a little bit more on the areas that you need it. Um, that's what I do and that's how I feel like I get the best results with this product. And all I really do is I do padding motions and then I kind of buff it in a little bit. 
Um, that's the way that I feel like this foundation works into the skin the best. So it doesn't look like it's just sitting on top of your skin because that is not cute. Okay, so I'm happy with that amount of coverage of foundation. Obviously, use as much as you think you need. Um, if you don't think you need that much, don't use that much. If you think you need more, use more. It's really your own personal preference. But this foundation, I really, really enjoy. Um, I love it for different reasons to my AX1 foundation. Um, two completely different foundations. It's like comparing pears to oranges. Not the same. Different ballpark. Um, but yeah. So sometimes I like to add a little bit of glow, sometimes I don't, but today I want to. So I'm going to add a tiny little bit of NARS Coco Cabana Illuminator on the tops of my cheekbones just to make me look a lot more glowy. And seriously, you do not need much of this stuff at all. Like seriously, the smallest amount, like that much, is how much I would use for both my cheekbones. So I do have some blemishes that the foundation didn't cover. Um, if I did put on another layer, I'm sure it would have covered it, but I'd rather just go in with concealer um, because it is a different texture to the liquid foundation. I like to use a cream to cover blemishes. So I like to use the EX1 Delete Concealer. I have mine in the shade D100, which is the lighter shade in the range, which is actually pretty bad um, considering I'm at my darkest and this is the lightest shade. Um, so I'm guessing it's more better for people with darker skin tones, but whatever. I'm just going to take a tiny little bit of this. It's just a cream, and I just like to put a little bit on my finger, and then I just like to dab it over where I need it, and it's like the exact same color as Rattan. Like seriously, can you see that I've put on concealer? Because I can't. <laughs> so I love this concealer for spot concealing. It's so good. And I love putting it in my handbag if I am this dark and say a little bit of foundation rubbed off my nose if I'm sick and stuff. I've really been liking using this just as like a little foundation touch up. It's really, really nice. Now it's about time that I covered up my dark under eye circles. I do have hereditary dark circles. It sucks, but what can you do? Um, so I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown corrector in the shade Peach. I've only recently started introducing this to my makeup routine, but I really, really do like it. I don't do this step every day, but when I want to look flawless, this is what I do. So I just get a tiny little bit on my ring finger. It isn't super creamy. It is a little bit harder, which I appreciate because it won't just slip and slide everywhere. It is very, very peachy toned, hence the name, but it does do what I need it to do to correct my dark circles. I'll show you one eye with corrector and with concealer, and then I'll show you without. Like, without anything on, because I will eventually cover it up. <laughs> but you'll get what I mean. So you can see that it does look a little bit funny, like it looks very, very orange underneath the eyes. But that's what you really, really need if you want to color correct. Because then over the top, you can fix it with, say, foundation or concealer. Now, for concealer, I've been using the same concealer pretty much religiously for the past year. Um, I either use this or the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. That's very, very similar consistency to this also. But for ease sake, I am gonna use this purely for the fact that I like the doe foot applicator a lot more than the twist top thing where the product dispenses out of into that little sponge. So I, my constant shade that I always use regardless is vanilla. I also own Chantilly and Custard, which is in my makeup bag. Um, I'll always use vanilla regardless of what time of the day, year, whatever. I'll always use vanilla. But then if I want it to be a bit brighter, I'll add in a little bit of Chantilly. And if I want it to not be as bright, I'll add in a little bit of custard. Um, it really just depends. I mix and match between the three, but vanilla is definitely my one constant. So because I am relatively tan, I am just going to use vanilla on its own today. And I've used so much that I need to scrape it out of the sides. So I'm just going to apply this kind of in a triangle-ish motion underneath my eyes. Just like that. And then I'm just going to use my foundation brush just to start blending it in. As you can see, it makes the biggest difference if you conceal and correct, um, opposed to this side that has nothing. Like seriously, look at this. And then look at this right? And you might be like, Laura, don't you get that effect if you just conceal? Kind of, but not really. 
Um, if you do have significant dark circles, then I would recommend the um, the corrector step, especially if you want a flawless face. For every day, I don't use the corrector. I do not have time for that. Um, but if I do want to look flawless, that is what I use. Now you can see if I tilt my head, you can still see the darkness. That's because that area has sunken in and there's nothing I can do about it. Um, but from front vision, this does help a lot. And it makes your concealer where you put your under eye highlight not so gray. Because think about it, if you have this color paint on some paper and then you put concealer color over the top, you can still see the color underneath. The corrector is used to kind of bring it back to the color of the rest of your face and then you can highlight. If that makes any sense at all, I hope it does. Now I'm also going to go in with that vanilla shade and I'm just going to highlight a few parts of my face just so my face isn't so one color and then I randomly have a bit of lightness on my face. So I just like to put a little bit, oh, so much. I like to just put a little bit on my forehead. So around here, like in the center, I like to put a tiny bit down my nose. A little bit on my chin, and then a little bit above my lip. And I'm just going to grab Chantilly just for the sake of it, and I'm just going to put a little bit underneath my eyes just to make it a little bit more bright. Just because it seems very, very dull today. Again, with concealer, I just play it by ear and I just hope for the best. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing today. I'm just gonna add a little bit of Chantilly there. And there one goes. And there, one. I look so funny right now. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so I'm just gonna dab this, blend it in. It only makes a subtle difference, but it doesn't look as flat as before. I like to put it down my nose, not to contour my nose, because I'm actually quite happy with the shape of my nose. It's more just to bring light to the center of my face. Um, yeah. <laughs> Some people like to use a smaller brush underneath their eye. To be honest, I can't really see a difference. I just find this faster. Okay, so to set my under eye concealer and where I placed a little bit of that highlight, I'm going to be using a MAC Shaping Powder in the shade Emphasize. So this one right here, it is a very, very light color, but I do find it looks very, very nice on me. Um, yeah, so I just like to put a little bit on my forehead just where I put that highlight. I like to put a little bit underneath my eyes. Just to keep the brightness there. A lot of people like to use banana powder, but to be honest, I like this powder way more. A little bit down my nose, a little bit on my chin. Now for the rest of my face to set the foundation, I've been adoring, and I cannot even explain, I have been adoring the Bourjois Healthy Balance Press Powder. This is in shade 53. It looks like this on the inside, and seriously, I love this powder so much. I'm just gonna use the same brush. So I'm just going to use the same brush. I'm just going to take a little bit of powder, top off any excess because you really don't need much. And I'm just going to pat that where I didn't put the highlight powder or the lighter powder, I should say. You can see that um, liquid illuminator just coming through that foundation as well. It just looks so pretty. Also, if you feel like your part, the lighter powder is making some parts of your face too light, you can always dust this powder in those areas and it will kind of make it a bit more normal looking <laughs> because it does have a slight tint to it. Like I don't know if swatching it on my finger will help, but it does have a slight tint and a little bit of pigment to it. So it is really, really nice and adding this tiniest bit of coverage, but also just equalizing the color. Another reason why I love this powder is because I have realized that it does keep me substantially more matte um, for a longer period of time than any other powder that I've used in the past. And seriously, it smells amazing. Like it smells like the Bourjois Healthy Mix powder. I'm Bourjois Healthy Mix foundation. No joke, it's so good. Okay, so this is basically how I achieve my flawless face. I will come back after I put on like bronzer and eyebrows and eye makeup and then I'll definitely come and show you the final look. Okay guys, so this is what the final looks 
the final look looks like with um, like eye makeup, eyebrows, bronzer, blush, everything else. Um, I use the Bobbi Brown bronzer in the shade Golden Light. It looks like this on the inside. I really, really like this bronzer. It's really, really pretty. I use the MAC Pro Powder in the shade Sculpt just to contour out my cheekbones just a little bit. And then I also used the MAC Warm Soul Blush, the Bourjois Eyeshadow in the shade 08 as an intense highlight. And then as a little bit of a less intense highlight, I used the Maybelline Master Highlights Powder in the shade Light Bronze. And that's all the products that I used in addition to um, my foundation and all that, just to create my flawless foundation routine. Um, I would have shown you all like the powder products, but it's seriously what I do in every video. The products just change. Um, but I did really want to talk you through like primer, foundation, and concealer, and powder. So yeah, I hope that made sense. I hope this video was of some help to you all. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.